Hello there fellow YouTubers, this is the Game Hoarder here. I'm bringing you a special presentation today. The other day I received this box from one of you viewers. Not sure if he wants his name mentioned or his uh, username mentioned anyways, but I'm not going to uh, mention it since he didn't let me know if you wanted me or to or not. Anyways, uh, he had requested that I do a game that I actually do not own in my collection and thusly he bought the game and sent it to me so here's the box it came in and the game is <clears throat> Harvester sent me a brand new sealed copy in the box uh, first print I of course opened it a little bit here so that we can get to the contents and play it um, it basically looks like uh, one of the old school CG games here let's see if I can get in there without the cellophane reflection messing it up But anyways, we're going to go ahead and start a let's play of The Harvester. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Apparently there's not any really good LPs of this on YouTube, which is why this uh, particular viewer uh, requested me to do it. Uh, that and I'm fucking awesome. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see, this is the inside of The Harvester box. Not much to it. It's just a piece of cardboard with a registration sheet. And of course, uh, the goodies come in here. This is one of those uh, double wide CD cases. Harvest Population 51. It's a nice little place where the fields and people are carved into pleasing shapes. The Lodge would like to remind you gently and lovingly of a self evident fact for which they will not be blamed. You can't stay in harvest without becoming a harvester. Interesting. And if we. Open it, we can see we have a couple discs here, a couple CDs. Now, I'll be uh, in charge of getting these to work. Some of these CG games are a little difficult to get to work on newer machines. Um, I definitely ran into some quick time issues with uh, Frankenstein, which is another LP I'll be doing eventually. And of course, we have a nice little chunky booklet here. Uh, this saves me from having to do a Let's Explore Harvester video later as well. So anyways, let's install it and begin the Let's Play. And I'd like to say thank you again to the viewer that sent this to me. Much appreciated for adding this to the collection. And uh, I hope you enjoy the LP. Let's get this Harvester show on the road. <laughs> Already ran into some video issues here, so... Pausing and stuttering. CG games use funky little video interpreters, so I don't know, we'll see. Let's hope we can make it through here. It's the town of Harvest. Population 51. Not a whole hell of a lot of people living here. Uh-oh. were of course breathtaking for their time. Now they just suck. This is supposed to be one of the goriest games ever made. I played it a long time ago. I don't think I finished it, but... And that's where it stuck last time.
my shirt. You dork. Now the screen goes bigger. So I'm going to have to stretch the screen out. So bear with me. Alright. The screen actually goes from a 600 by 400 resolution to a 600 by 480. So I needed to adjust the screen so that you could see everything. Oh, look at here. How nice. We have Harvester Gameplay Tips. Look before you leave. That's so fucking insightful. But we look in the drawer before we leave. The dresser drawer is unlocked. Well, let's open it then. Crazy bastard. Oh, look, look here. We got a quarter. We're rich. Dated 1952. Oh, shit. Alright, 1952 quarter. Two marks are visible on the end of this ballpoint pen. Alright, we got a ballpoint pen. As of yet, the future isn't so bright. Hardy har har. The mattress is speckled with odd stains. Well, we won't go there. Typical wall clock. A 148 scale P47 Thunderbolt with broken propeller. And a P-51 Mustang, of course. A recently watered plastic plant. That makes a whole lot of sense, let me tell you. A cheap folding chair, such as that you find at swap meets, bingo parlors, and other religious gatherings. You peer through a thin layer of dust at your reflection. Holy shit. Anything else we can pick up in here? Seven flannel shirts accompanying with matching blue jeans are hanging neatly in the closet. All right, well, no one of these guys are getting laid. Who's this little dick? What? Who the hell are you? Leave me alone, Steve, or I'll tell Mom on you. I'll punch you in the face. Steve, are you talking to me? Yeah, only I don't want to be, because I'm trying to watch my cowboy show. Kids I'm dick. sorry. Look, I'm telling you, I need your help. I've lost my memory. Have not. Cut it out. I'm telling you the truth. You always were a kidder, Steve. Leave me alone. I'm sick. You're a lying kid. What's wrong with you? I got a headache and a stomachache. Then why aren't you in bed? Because I want to watch my cowboy show. You look all right to me. I'm not faking. I couldn't go to school because I'm sick. Daddy's sick in bed, too. And Mom believes me anyway, so shut up. So glad I don't have to do any little kid voices. God bless me. Your dad is asleep? He and Mom went at it last night pretty hard. He stayed in bed. I saw what she did to him. It was pretty bad. What did she... Like, you don't know. I saw you and her on the couch last Wednesday night. Guess that's why she's grounded now, huh? Too bad you wouldn't pay me and I had to tell, huh? What are you talking about? What girl? What? Is there another one too? Wait till I tell. I don't know what girl you're talking about. All summer, it's been Stephanie this and Stephanie that. And now you don't remember? You think I'm dumb or something? No, I just can't remember anything, like I said. Well, you better remember quick, because the wedding's in two weeks. What? Leave me alone so I can watch TV. I don't think you're dumb, but I think you look stupid as hell in that cowboy hat. That's a weird looking television. Kick in the face. Come to think of it, this whole place looks totally retro. What do you mean retro? All TVs look alike. Sure, basically. But this is one old fashioned clunker. Old fashioned? It's brand new. Yeah, but look at the two. Oh, oh Where's the remote control? Fucked up. What's that? I. Now that I think about it, I can't remember. And what was that you said about retro rockets? No, retro. It means... It means... Oh, man, I know what I mean. That everything here is wrong. But I can't picture the difference. Then shut up and quit bugging me. I'm watching my trouble show. Have you noticed that your show is in black and white? What else? Color? On a TV? Well, I... I think I've seen a color television before. Have not. 
Quit it or I'm gonna tell. Hey, look at that. Your mother lets you watch this stuff? Sure. This is part of history. What made America great. And besides, blood and guts are needed. I'm glad you're catching on, Steve. You're not too bad for a lousy rat. Have you noticed that your ship? What? Well, yeah, you just I said that. Not... Hey, look at ship. What made in the? Well, you can't stop me. So. Anyways. Good. Finally. I'm done talking to that little turd. Let's see what's cooking in the kitchen. Well, hello there. How about some cookies? There's plenty of rejects in the trash. Who are you? That's a fine way to talk to your mother. You're my mother? That's right. Though sometimes Look I like get treated bitch. like the hired help around here. I don't remember you. Of course you don't. Until you need your socks washed. No, you don't understand. I can't remember where I am or even who I am. Land's sake, stop your joshing, won't you? Honestly, Steve, I thought you'd grow up a little after graduation. I only hope that new job will plant your feet on the ground. So that's my name. Steve. Your, your name will be M.U.D. Mud if you don't stop teasing me, young man. Listen, this may sound strange, but I've lost my memory. Do you believe me? Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. I'm serious. Sure, and next you'll be telling me you don't remember Hank and your little sister. Sister? Shh, you'll wake her. I just put her down to sleep. If she wakes up, she'll just want to eat again. Oh, that's nice. Darn it, I'm busy, and if you think I'm going to play along with this nonsense, you're crazier than Sparky down at the firehouse. Fine, maybe I am crazy. I can't rule that out. Why can't you just help me a little? Is that too much to ask? Now you've done it. Are you happy? Poor baby. There, there. Did your brother scare you? Let me see. What the fuck? What the fuck? Darn that wasp woman. She's a monster, that's what she is. She just hit the kid. Call him fucking HRS, man. Wasp woman? you a crumb is going to hear about this. I want you to go to her house right now and give her a piece of my mind. I don't know where she lives. Honestly, you can't miss a house covered with paper nests. Steve, you tell her to mind her own beeswax or by golly, I'll take it up at the PTA or the lodge. What's the PTA got to do with anything? Show some respect, Steve. The PTA has a lot of cloud in harvest. We run the charity bake sale, the annual blood drive, and by gosh, we even have ties to the lodge. What lodge? The Hall of the Order of the Harvest Moon, Steve. It's just the finest place in Harvest, and the most exclusive. What's so great about it? Hard to say, since hardly anyone gets inside. But it wouldn't be so exclusive if it wasn't just wonderful. Just like the new Reynolds dishwasher with their patented auto-dry process, TM. I've never used one, but I know I want TM. it. Instead of sulking around the house all day, why not walk over to the lodge and apply for membership? Stop beating your kid. That's wonderful, Steve. If you got into the lodge, you'd be the talk of Harvest. Harvest? Harvest is a town unlike any you've ever known. In what way? I don't have time to go into it now. Why not take a walk around town and pester someone else? I'm busy. Whatever, bitch. You are a bitch. Stop speaking nonsense, dear. Eat my shit. Stop speaking nonsense, dear. Oh, whatever. Don't forget to put the papers out for Jimmy. You know how he gets. I'm not picking up no damn newspaper. A box of crayons and a Range Rider coloring book. A box for the newspapers. Whoa! 
Oh yeah, I'm a fighter. Check it out. Uh, oh, I'll kick that ass. Yeah. Uh, uh. Shake it. One, two, one, and two, three, four. It's terrible. Gotta look at my inventory here. Oh Jesus, it's small. Health indicator. Uh, looking good. Looking good. It's Monday, spring 1953. Jimmy James, I'll punch your ass out. Hey, Steve, I'm Jimmy James. Remember me? Uh, I guess not. There now, see how easy it is? Things are so much better between us when you remember the paper in the morning. And let's keep them that way. See you later, alligator. Why the hell am I giving you the paper? Aren't you supposed to give me the paper? Give me my day glow Lima space disc. Oh! Whoa! I just punched the kid in the game crash. That's fucked up! Okay, we're back. We're gonna not punch the kid because I t tried it again and I think if you watch the video closely, it looks like he pulls out a gat. But anyways, game crashes every time you do it. See? Crash. Told you. I wasn't kidding. So no more beating up little Jimmy. Hey, Steve, I'm Jimmy James. Uh... Well, I don't, you selfish punk. How'd you expect a working Joe to make an honest living? You don't put the paper out... So what? You don't get paid for picking up papers anyway. The Sentinel building burnt down. What the heck else am I supposed to do? Listen, start putting that paper out and everything will be Jake, okay? That's all I want that and a pair of sneakers. Walking this route every day has worn holes in mine. Say, you got any spare sneakers? Whoa, that's great. Maybe we could trade. What could you give me? You know this Whaley and Principal Harold down at the school? Well, I found out they're messing around with each other in the broom closet. I can tell you when they meet and trade you some keys that'll let you catch them red-handed. What do you say? Okay, take the sneakers. Before I give with the keys, let me see those... First the keys, then the sneakers. Nuh-uh. If you're trying to pull a fast one on me, forget it. You don't get the keys till I see the sneakers. And that's that. Maybe I forgot to give the kid the paper. Shit. So I'm trying to punch the kid out. Hey, Steve. Uh. There now. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, anyways. Fuck off, kid. Alright. Oh. Let's go to the post office. Crushed paper cup with a smudged lipstick on it. Forty-one percent off packing peanuts. Oh, I need to go there. It's a good fucking deal. Yes, I need some help, Mister Postmaster Boyle. What can I do for you today? I'd like a lodge application. Mm, sorry, youngster, we're out of applications right now. Come on, you must have one around here somewhere. Well, I do have the master, but you can't write on that. And I only make copies once a month on the button, regular as clockwork. Well, can I get one? Come on, it won't kill you to make a lousy copy, you old fart. It's not the effort, son. It's the principle. 
We must adhere to our standards. They're all that stand between civilization and chaos. I'm sorry, you'll just have to come back in a month, same as anyone else. And even then, I can't guarantee you'll get an application. The line is always long, and there are never enough to go around. It's very important that I get in quickly. That's what they all say. Postmaster Boyle, I'll just die if I don't get into the lodge. I can't make an exception, young man. It just wouldn't be right. You're a dick. Next time you post, don't forget the zip code. Shut the fuck up. Blind woman trying to read her mail. Oh yeah, bet that's working out real good for her. I'm out of this shithole. What else we got? Bar General store, let's go there. Can I help you, dear? Who are you? This is Phelps General Store. So who would that make me? Maybe you need to go back to Gene Memorial and have Miss Whaley teach you about logic. I'm fuzzy on a lot of things these days. My memory's gone. Shaw, you always were a kidder, Steve. I'm serious. I need some help. I'll say. Well, they say a sharp blow to the head is a good thing for amnesia. In which case, I'd recommend Miss Whaley again. Then again, they say a good scare can jog the memory. In which case, I'd advise you to visit the sergeant at arms over at the lodge. That man gives me the willies. Speaking of willies, how's your father? Don't know. Haven't seen him. Do you know about my can father's willies? Can I buy anything Willie? today? Just point to whatever you want. I'm a little hard of hearing. Steve. Care to buy anything today? Just point to whatever you want. The shelf contains a variety of odd items for sale. Well, let me fucking look. Let's see what do we got here. Adult magazine? That's what I want. 25 cents. That's what I want. Give it to me. Give me the porn. Must have the porn. A girly magazine? Why, Steve, I'm surprised at you. I'd expect that sort of thing from Deputy Loomis, but never from you. He's always coming in here oogling the girly magazines behind my counter. Darned if I'd sell him one, though. I know his wife, for heaven's sakes. Well, will you sell me one? I certainly will, Steve. That kind of interest is healthy for a young fellow. Stares him away from being a fireman. Okay, then. Not sure what firemen have to do with being gay. Anyways, I've got my nudie magazine, I think. Bitch better give it to me. Give me my new Yeah. Nudie magazine day. Nudie magazine day. Where else do we need to go here? Barbershop. You can double click on exits to skip the walking, which I like. Holy shit. Look at that little midget. Except for its occasional hairball cough, it's hard to tell if the sheep is alive or not. Mr. Pastorelli doesn't respond, not understanding English. What about the little fucking midget? Howdy, guy? Steve. Yeah. Howdy back, Mr. Pete Swell, Steve. Don't you pull my old leg now. Change your mind about that aluminum siding. What are you talking about? I really think you should talk your father into buying some. He can afford it. And I can't stress enough the value of some really fine aluminum siding. Keeps it warm in the summer, cool in the winter, and it keeps out the sheep. 
Pastorelli ought to look into some, but I can't get him to understand a word I say. Some of that sheep. Can't understand why Pastorelli keeps that nasty thing in here. Must remind him of the pastors in Italy. Kind of like why I keep wrenches under my pillow, so as I can dream about plumbing. Well, I seen the end coming for the aluminum siding game, so I took a mail course and learned how to be a plumber. Now, there's a business that never lets up. You'd be surprised what people flush down the toilet. Yeah, not really. Pastor Relly's a rube from way back. Ask Clem Parsons how he followed up with the alarm system in here. I'm a plumber. I could fix it for him, but he just won't listen. Later, Midget. Nice to see you again, Steve. Let's talk to this retard. Hello there, youngster. Oh, Jesus. You say, them aliens I was telling you about? Well, they came back last night. Cut another crop circle in my south field. How come I never seen none of them saucers clam? Them aliens is wily, Pete. You don't cross the intergalactic void without learning. Gotta love the facial expressions. You know what Pastorelli did? Yesterday, he gets an alarm system to protect his pole. <laughs> Only he don't know how to rig it, so now it's all awry. I got a pole. Why, that barber's pole of his is his pride and joy. Brought it all the way over from Italy. Rats all nice. special like. That's a nice pole. It ain't nothing but colored glass with some bulbs just stuck up in it. Cody thinks it's to be all end all. Installed that alarm system just to protect it. So who in tarnation did want to steal a worthless piece of junk like that? I, I don't know. Maybe them aliens, Clem. Oh, Pete, don't be ignorant. Them aliens don't give a fig for no colored glass. You think if they can build spaceships, they can't make a bad gum barber pole? Crazy heck, don't know nothing about science. Well, son, the ways of the alien is a specialized area of woodcraft unknown to all but the wiliest sportsmen. What you gotta remember is, your average alien is smarter than your average human. So you gotta be extra careful building your blind if you want to bag one. You hunt aliens. Son, after nailing an alien, you can never go back to quail. What, you think you can get one of those and just swap me? What the shit? Line your blind with lead to fool their sensing machines. Lay real quiet and wait. Preferably in the woods around the nuclear base. Oh, they love messing around out there. Why not wait outside your field, Clem? Wait for them to come a carving. Oh, they do their crop doodles with zap guns, you darn fool. Don't you know nothing? Besides, ain't no place to put the blind out in the field. Now, you listen to Clem Parsons if you want to tag an unearthly being. They cross the void, wondering what lies beyond, all the time not knowing that what awaits them is buckshot, buckshot. Right. Anytime, Steve. I'm done talking to this backwoods country sister fucking pick. Damn residence. The garage needs a new paint job. What do you mean? The whole fucking house needs a new paint job. I'm just gonna let myself in. Look at this fat ass. There he is, my future son in law. And how's he doing today? What brings him to the Pottstown household, huh? Huh? I came over to see Stephanie, whoever the hell she is. Oh, you'll have to ask the missus about that. Stephanie's grounded to the wedding. Can't have her changing her mind at the last minute. Not with all that meat at stake. Meat? Meat is the foundation of any decent society. Everyone needs at least three servings of red meat a day. 
and anyone who says otherwise is a commie. And once you're married to Stephanie, I'll be part of the family too. And your father will give me all the meat I want. <sighs> kind of makes up for not getting into the lodge. This is a fucking scary town. Why are you so anxious to get into the lodge? There's wonders inside. I've heard there's more meat in there than they know what to do. Now that you're of age, Steve, you might go down to the post office and fill out a lodge application. They're always looking for new blood. Look at my mouth move. Marriage. Tell me about this wedding. Well, it looks like we're going to have to hold the wedding down at the funeral parlor, since I'm not a member of the lodge. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Mr. Moynihan has given his okay, and your father is going to cater the affair with plenty of meat. Meat, meat, meat! Moynihan is the undertaker. He also runs the Wayward Hotel. Since he's providing the space for the wedding, you might stop by and say hello to him, just to be sociable. But whatever you do, be sure to say hi to your father for me. Will you do that? Tell him hi, and remind him of the meat. You got meat, you got meat issues, buddy. You gotta save my game before it crashes. Trust these old DOS games. Oh, it's Mrs. Potsdam. Hello, Steve. Oh, I hit it. Have you floss today? You look just like my mom, except for your hair. Honestly, you men can insult a woman without even knowing you've done it. What a horrible thing to say. You're both standing around baking cookies. Same cut of dress. Same pearls. So bizarre. There's nothing bizarre about baking cookies. The Harvest Journey Bake Sale is Friday, you know, and by gosh, Mrs. Marvin Potsdam Jr. can be counted on to do her share. Bake Sale? This is a charity bake sale. What is it supposed to benefit? Oh, I just like talking about gruesome subjects. When you get right down to it, all charity is pretty ugly, isn't it? I don't follow. Ask Mr. Moynihan. He's organized this event in conjunction with the Lodge, naturally. The Lodge? What can you tell me about the Lodge? Just that they're exclusive and secretive. If you're curious, you ought to pick up a Lodge application at the post office and take it over to the Sergeant-at-Arms. Isn't that a thought? Forget Mr. Potsdam. If you became a member of the Order, we could hold the wedding inside the Lodge. My, wouldn't that be lovely? Sure. Tell me about this wedding. Well, it's set for three weeks. We're holding it over at Shady Oaks, Mr. Moynihan's funeral parlor. Say what? Now, I know it's not a very romantic place, but there's nowhere else to hold it, thanks to Mr. Potsdam. You mustn't be too hard on Mr. Potsdam, Steve. He's a disappointed man. No matter how many lodge admission forms he fills out, they keep turning him down. He has a new application in, though, so keep your fingers crossed. If he joins the lodge, you and Stephanie can have your wedding in the Chapel of Love, rather than over at Moynihan's place. I want to bang your daughter. I want to bang Stephanie. Sorry, I didn't catch that. <laughs> Anyways, I'm out. You suck. Give my regards to your parents. You're boring as hell. Sorry, you'll have to ask Mrs. Potsdam for permission to see Stephanie. She's in the... Are you kidding me? Hello, dear. Come to see Stephanie, have you? Yes. She's upstairs. Go right on up. Just remember, she's... Okay, shut up. 
Give my regards. I'm gonna tap that ass real quick while y'all are downstairs. Rubber ducky. Thin layer of hair coats virtually every inch of ceramic, and the rubber ducky has seen better days. Wads of used tissues fill this trash can, some of them stuck to the sides. Oh man, Mr. Potsdam, what have you been doing in here? She's purdy. She's purdy. Picture on the wall is hanging a bit crooked. Aha. Holy shit, look at the thighs on that one. Hit the gym, baby. As you can see, the FM videos uh, they scrunch down back to a 600 by or 640 by 400 screen. Really, not much I can do about that. It's just gonna have to be dealt with. Anyways, YouTubers, stay tuned for some more Harvester. Still to come.